Hey everyone, welcome back to the program. If you're like me and hang around vinyl forums and subreddits long enough, you'll notice a disdain for these types of suitcase record players. The general belief is that they will damage your vinyl and this mostly comes from the fact they are very cheaply made and they employ a ceramic cartridge with very heavy tracking force. And while I don't necessarily disagree, I was skeptical as to the degree of harm that they would do to your vinyl. And since I was given this record player as a promotion for the film yesterday, I thought why not test out the claim for myself. So on today's program, I will be pitting this cheap $50 record player against this $250 turntable. Now, obviously, I'm not the first one to do something like this. The YouTube channel Jim Bob Lives Forever made a, actually a very good video on this. He took two seven inch singles and played them 100 times each, and then he listened back for any damage. Like I said, I thought he did a very good job. However, after watching it, I felt like I could improve upon his experiment. Um, the first thing is he used seven inch records and I feel like most people buying this kind of turntable are actually listening to 12 inch records playing at 33 RPMs. In his video, those records were playing at 45 RPMs. I don't know if that makes a difference in terms of speed, but I know 100 plays on a 12 inch record playing at 33 RPMs is a lot more wear and tear on the record and the stylus. And lastly, the audio he pulled came from the same needles that were played 100 times, so it could be that the stylus is worn and not the record groove. So my hypothesis at this point is that these type of record players don't actually damage vinyl, but the real crime is the quality of playback. These don't sound great. And I think what's actually happening is that most of these turntables come out of the box fitted with a ruby or sapphire stylus. And that's what's actually causing the damage because if, if you look at this old Columbia Records inner sleeve here, it's got sapphire needle will last about 50 hours of play versus a diamond needle will last around a thousand hours. So you can already see the difference right there. So that to me is, is kind of says that probably what's happening is that people are not they don't know better or they don't realize that these do wear out and the ones that come out of the box wear out faster. That's what's causing the damage because they wear, they get blunt much more quickly than a diamond stylus. So for my experiment, I wanted to build upon that video by using three copies of the same record. I found this classical choir LP. It was the cheapest record I could find new. Even though once I got it, I realized this is from 1987, but these were sealed records, identical. I got them for five bucks each. Next, I used three turntables for my test. This Victrola brand suitcase turntable with a new diamond stylus, my trusty Audio-Technica LP120 fitted with the new ATVM 95E cartridge and a new stylus. And finally, as my control, the Fluence RT85 with an Otophone 2M Blue cartridge with very few hours on it. Next, I cleaned each record with my record doctor and then dedicated one record to each turntable. To begin my experiment, I recorded the first needle drops from each turntable. I then played two of the records 100 times each on the LP120 and the Victrola, checking in at 25, 50, and of course 100 plays, taking care to brush off any dust on the record after each play and periodically cleaning the needles. First up is the Victrola. I'll play the first pass, the 100th pass, and compare them to the control record played on the RT-85. Also, the samples I play come from the beginning, middle, and end of the record.
right, now we're gonna do the Audio Technica LP120. <laughs> And now I want you to listen to the 100 plays of these two turntables. See if you can hear a difference. And now let's check the 100th passes from the Victrola and the LP120 compared to the very same records cleaned and played on the RT85. Now keep in mind, I kind of screwed up and played them on the RT85 on the 101st pass without cleaning them. I thought I should, I thought they might sound better. And so I wet cleaned them first. And so that's why you'll be hearing the 102nd pass. I don't know about you guys, but I was surprised by the level of surface noise this turntable introduced. I, I was not expecting that at all, to be honest. Um, but it's it's night and day. Granted, I, I'm listening to these audio samples on headphones. Now, through a set of speakers, it's not as noticeable. And also, I didn't feel like it took away any of the highs of the audio. So it's not necessarily grinding down your records but the surface noise is there and it doesn't go away, it's permanent. And now I was curious, at what point does the surface noise start to get introduced by this suitcase turntable? And I went back to the 25th and 50th plays and I was surprised by the 25th play, we start to hear surface noise, check it out. So that's kind of a scary thought. I mean, that's literally playing, I don't know, 25 divided by two. I can't do that. That's like, that's like 12 and a half records that you play. All of a sudden you're starting to get surface noise. Now, I don't know if that's just because we played the same record 25 times, or if that's because it's a, it's, you know, adding up. It's the, it's the wear of the needle that's also doing it too. So what's going on here? I think it's the fact that the tracking force is so heavy with this turntable. It is around, it's almost six grams. It's like 5.8 versus this turntable is running around two grams. You could do a little lighter or like 1.8 or 2.2, but it's right around there. That's where you want to have it. So this is almost three times three times the tracking force, three times the weight on, on a record. Um, I think that's, that's quite significant. Another big thing about this turntable is that there's no dust cover. So as you play one side of a record, which is, you know, anywhere from 17 to 22 minutes, give or take, that's a lot of time for dust, dirt, and other particles to land on the surface of your record, causing further damage down the road if you're not careful. 
are you gonna hear that surface noise if you play records using these, uh, these really crappy speakers on here? Probably not. Are you gonna hear it through a nicer sound system? Yeah, but it's not gonna be as noticeable as it is on headphones. So, you know, even if you go ahead and, and bypass the front speakers and just simply send the audio out through here, through a set of bookshelf speakers, you're still gonna be, in the end, damaging your records. And I think, the, again, going back to my hypothesis, yes, that's unfortunate that these record players do damage your records, but I think it's more to the fact that they don't, this doesn't sound good. Just listen to the difference between this turntable and that, which you've heard throughout the video, and you can already hear how much clearer it sounds. Now, the jump from this to the Fluence isn't as big, but this to this, oh my gosh, it's it's almost night and day. So I really implore you, if you are thinking about getting one of these or you have one and you're waiting and you're you're buying a lot of records that cost uh, 20, 30, 40 dollars, I think you should save up and get something like this. Now granted, this is $250 new, but there are lower cost options. The entry level turntable from U-Turn Audio is a great option. It's around $200 shipped and comes in a variety of colors. Or you could do a little research and pick up a used or vintage turntable. Check out the forums on vinylengine.com if you're unsure of the quality of a particular model. But if a suitcase player is the only one you have for the time being, I recommend replacing the stylus with a diamond tip and change it often, maybe after every 25 records. For more helpful tips on getting the most out of these types of record players, check out this video by V West Life. All right, everyone, that will do it for today. Let me know what you think. Have you had a good or bad experience with these types of record players? Were you surprised by what you heard or did it confirm what you already believe to be true? I'm curious to know. Until then, I wanna thank you all so much for watching. I am your Vinyl Geek and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this episode. Now, if you want to see my review of the RT85, I'll put a link right there, as well as a video that YouTube will choose for me.